Welcome to Everyday Linux User. In today's video, we're going to be reviewing Q4 OS. Now, Q4 OS is a lightweight uh, Linux distribution, and there's two versions available. Uh, officially, there's the KDE version, and there's the one with the Trinity desktop. And the one I'm reviewing here is the Trinity desktop. One, because I haven't reviewed the Trinity desktop before in any other of my videos. And two, it makes Q4 OS uh, more lightweight and I'm trying to review lightweight distributions so I can uh, come up with a definitive list of which ones perform the best and therefore which ones I can recommend to um, users with low spec PCs. So you can see uh, that Q4 OS has a fairly Windows look and feel to it. Um, they've gone to their trouble of calling uh, icons like my computer, my network, my documents, uh, which is fairly familiar to um, people that used uh, older versions of Windows. I've installed the full package list um, rather than just a simple desktop, so it's got all the packages that you'd expect for that. And uh, so let's have a look at why, where Q4 OS is uh, with regards to DistroWatch. So uh, Q4 OS is down in 29th position in DistroWatch. Uh, there are some good selling points for um, Q4 OS, I'll come to them now. So uh, it's based on Debian and it's based on the Debian stable branch I believe, which means um, it is rock solid stable. Uh, it might not be as completely up to date in terms of the latest packages, but um, it's not going to break um, very quickly. Uh, the Trinity desktop makes uh, the desktop very light, which means you have more memory to play with and less CPU usage um, taken by the desktop environment. Uh, you've also got this concept of a Windows installer. Uh, I don't overly recommend it, even though I have created a video for it. But basically, you can install Q4 OS as if it is a Windows application. So I've installed Q4 OS onto this PC, as you can see, and this is the welcome screen you see when you first start Q4 OS. So we're going to look at each of these in turn um, before um, following on with the rest of the review. Uh, so if I run this desktop profiler, you can see these are the options you have. You can have fully featured desktop with web browser, office suite and recommended applications, which is what I've chosen. You can have the basic uh, Q4 OS with common utilities, or you can have a very minimal desktop. Um, then you've got a choice of desktop environment. So Trinity is the one I've installed, but if I click here, you can choose any one of these desktop environments as well. So KDE Plasma, LXQT, XFCE, etc. You can install proprietary codecs. Let's do that. We worry about installing applications uh, a bit further on. And you can see the, the, the look and feel of this window is very Windows-esque. So if you're coming from a Windows background, uh, especially if you're coming from an older Windows background, this has a very familiar look and feel. So that's that done. Uh, we can switch the start menu. So by default you have this Bourbon menu, which is like so let's apply that, make sure it's the right one. Okay, so the Bourbon menu is like this. And you can go into each category. And then you can find the program you're looking for. You can also search for a program. So if I want a GBA office, you can see it returns the search results. And you've got all these things here as well. Then you've got this kickoff menu, which is the one I actually prefer. Uh, so that's the kickoff menu, and the search is at the top. And again, I can do LibreOffice. And there you go with that. And we can switch to the classic menu. And this is very old school. 
and in some ways it's easier to see what you're looking for but what I would say about this is if you've got a smaller screen then it's going to expand across the screen quite quickly you ha can set auto login um, so if you want to log in automatically without having to type in your password you can do that here I don't overly recommend that and then we've got install applications and that loads the Q4 OS software center now some good features in here so by default the web browser is Conqueror um, but there's also Chromium installed as well so because it's KDE um, based Trinity was the old version of KDE and that's why you got Conqueror but you also get Chromium as well but if you wanted to uninstall Chromium and install Google Chrome you can do that So to uninstall, you double click and then do uninstall. Type in your password. And now I can install Chrome instead. And you can see it's very Windows esque the way you install software. And that's that. Uh, so if I go to Chrome, I can add that to my favourites. I can add an item to the desktop. If I want to add it into here, right click, click add applications, and then you have to go and find it. So like that, and there Chrome now appears in the quick launch item as well. Prove it works, click on it. And the first thing you should do is go to youtube.com forward slash at everyday Linux user and then if you haven't hit that subscribe button. Going down the list other software packages you can see we've got VLC installed uh, they've got this uh, look switcher if you've got an Nvidia card you might want to install the Nvidia drivers if you want a music player Clementine's available if you've got a HP printer you want to install HP drivers I'm going to do that now and you can see it's very point and click that's now installed so when we get to the hardware later on that will be working and um, we might as well install Blue Man as well and that will help us with our Bluetooth uh, later on in the process uh, it says you have to reboot to um, make sure Bluetooth is working so we are going to do that so here we are we're back there's a lightweight browser called Falcon music editor you can install GIMP Inkscape Cheese Time Shift for um, backups uh, there's an Amarok audio player Audacity Blender's available the 3D chess game FileZilla for FTP Kden Live for video editing. I will install that later because I will need that. And then there's a few other games and video editors like OpenShot. And that's all the packages that are in this software center, but there's also Synaptic. And that gives you access to all the Debian repositories and so you can find all sorts of other applications by browsing through the category so if you're an amateur radio enthusiast literally anything you want is in here so Java programming language multimedia video software utilities there's a whole host of software and this basically um, is a front end to apt. So let's look at the hardware. Now you've seen me install the HP software. So for the first time in a long time I'm using Wi-Fi um, instead of a wired connection and you can see I'm connected to my wireless OK. Uh, if I go to printers You 
can see it's picked up my printer. OK. We'll try Bluetooth. Uh, what was interesting then was the Bluetooth got hidden behind. Um, there was a pop up that went behind the Bluetooth manager. Um, so I couldn't see it, so I was trying to close it and nothing was happening. So if I click search, you can see now um, there are things appearing. One of them is my Bluetooth speaker. So something to be wary of is that up behind the actual window. So I'll pop under the actual machine. Uh, I installed GNOME. Uh, this is using the X11, not the Wayland. I find the screen recorders work better when it's not used on Wayland. Uh, so so um, you can hear that I've got Bluetooth working. It came through my speaker. I'm not going to lie, it took uh, a few attempts to get it to come through. Um, I didn't actually change any settings or anything like that. I just kept um, disconnecting and reconnecting and eventually it uh, finally started playing. Bluetooth's always a bit hit and miss as far as I'm concerned um, when it comes to speakers. Uh, but yeah, I've had more success on other distributions. Uh, so audio, sound, so audio, printing, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, all working. Um, I've got a USB drive installed and you can see that's working correctly as well. You have this concept of a look switcher. So by default, we've got um, Debonair, which is what we want here. You can have Q4OS default. And this is what Q4OS uh, default looks like. I'm going to close this so it doesn't come up each time I reboot. And you see the icons are a lot smaller. Uh, the menu looks different. Not considerably slow, but it's a different theme. You have the uh, slide one, uh, spring. So this is a spring one. This looks a bit more Windows 7 esque. Um, or Windows Vista y. So if we look at the file manager situation, uh, it starts off in your documents folder. So you can go up and then you can see the rest of your folders um, for your user. So you've got your downloads, music, pictures as, as on every other system. And you can keep going up and you can see the full um, file manager that way. You can go to my computer and that gives you um, your documents folder, any storage media, user folders, a home folder, and remote places. So you can add in network shares to other machines. If we look at what's installed by default, get a small set of games, you have an image viewer, you have a screen capture programmer, a paint programmer, a paint program, you have um, a web browser, you've seen I've uninstalled Chromium and put Chrome on, uh, but you have Thunderbird mail client, you have Kmail mail client, so there's a bit of duplication, you can uninstall these things. Uh, you have an audio player, and a media player. Uh, there's a full LibreOffice suite. You've seen I've installed the HP Dip software. You've seen the look switcher. You've seen the printing. Uh, we've got a control panel. And then you've got these system tools as well. And so it comes with a fairly decent set of software. The look switcher, by the way, uh, you can show all themes, and you can see there's actually a lot more themes than I originally showed. So you could have Redmond, which is very Windows esque. And they're all quite Windows esque, but this one is very much so. Now, it wouldn't be a complete review of Q4 OS if I didn't mention XP Q4, um, which enables you to make your Q4 really look like Windows. And so you see there's an XP installer for the Trinity desktop. 
so you can use the full or free version so the free version has no proprietary icons the full version has proprietary icons so I'm going to try that out so we'll save that into our downloads and it's done and you basically step through the installer now that's installed you can see we've got XPQ4 here, we can close this window down and you can now see the different themes available so we can do Windows 2000 which is like this, Windows XP, Windows XP Luna, Windows 7, Windows 8, oh god knows who's choosing Windows 8 and Windows 10. So let's try them out and it's fair to say uh, Microsoft could sue someone if they really wanted to but uh, yes this is the Windows 10 theme and it looks very Windows 10-esque until you click down here um, it's not a perfect situation um, but what this does do um, for Windows users moving to Linux it does make you feel a little bit more at home if you want to have that Windows look and feel but use Linux. It's, it's one of those things, is it a good thing or a bad thing? Should you just learn Linux and forget about Windows or is this a good halfway house? And if you're nostalgic for a bit of Windows XP um, then this is the Windows XP theme for XP Q4. You can change the wallpaper uh, so by default it's Bliss because that's the one for Windows XP but you can choose all these different ones and that looks very nice indeed. So I'm now going to sum up. Uh, Q4 OS is a lightweight distribution. I haven't mentioned the performance aspects of it uh, but uh, running idly uh, before I start my screen recording software it runs about uh, 400 megabyte marks maybe 450 uh, so it's very lightweight uh, this is the Trinity desktop that's not the the KDS uh, the KDE desktop uh, KDE plasma may be um, a lot different to that but the Trinity desktop very lightweight it's got a very uh, Windows look and feel especially if you apply the XPQ4 styling um, and then hardware supports okay uh, printing uh, Wi-Fi uh, Bluetooth and audio all worked. Uh, it's easy to install some software packages uh, for people that uh, want other software packages you have to get your head around Synaptic. All in all I've used Q4 OS in the past and I had it running on an older PC and it worked very very well and I had it on there for a good year and a half two years um, just happily using it. Um, and it worked fine. Um, I could do most of the things I wanted to do. Uh, if, if you realize that it's Debian underneath, then um, the, the rest of it is um, just makes it, you can't get Trinity with most other distributions. Q4 OS is the one that's, that's selling uh, Trinity as it is. And it's a nice desktop. It's not got all the mod cons that you'd have, like um, snappy windows and all that sort of thing, but it works. So. If you want to keep your memory usage down and your CPU usage down, then Q4 OS is good. And if you really like this Windows look and feel, then um, you're going to be uh, well at home. Uh, that's really it. Uh, that's the end of the review. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on Everyday Linux User.